Hi there, Kirk McDowell with ContributionSelling.com. And uh, today's question I'd like to answer is, what is a good closing rate in sales? So what's a good closing rate in sales, okay? So let's discuss what, what the question means just for a moment and then we'll, then we'll dig into it. Um, I've got some fun answers for you. So, okay, so uh, what is a good closing rate in sales? So first of all, what does closing mean? Closing is the, the culmination of business. It's when somebody signs a contract, says yes, writes a check, hands over cash, uh, it is the it is the uh, it is the movement in time and space, right? It's the actual something's happening here, right? Someone says yes to something, and then something is now different, right? I say yes to buying a car. I'm now a car owner with the opportunities and problems that a car owner has. I now have a payment and responsible for insurance, and I can move around. The, I can drive around, right? So. So there was a moment before I was a car owner, and then there was a moment after I was a car owner, and that moment happened when I said yes to something, right? So that's closing. Closing is when someone says, yes, I'll do that, I'll take that, I'll, I'll sign up for that, I'll, you know, whatever, right? You know, yes, here's my money, I, I want that. So that's closing, right? And so closing rate, uh, let's call that, a, let's change the word rate to percentage. So closing percentage, is uh, if you, you know, uh, attempted to, to do business with somebody on 10 occasions and they said yes once and some version of no or not now uh, eight times, you would have a 20% close rate, right? 20% of the people that you attempt to close say yes, right? Uh, I've, it's hard to really test this out. It does kind of bear, bear my, my experience does kind of bear this out, but a typical statement you hear a lot is that an average close rate is about 10% uh, even or somewhere between 10 and 20%. Now, some of that's affected by your industry. In some industries, you would be expected to have a much higher close rate than in other industries, right? Uh, and it has to do with the competitive nature of it or how business is done in that particular industry. Let me see if I can uh, give you an example. So uh, I was in the copier business once upon a time, uh, many, many moons ago. And uh, the copier business is known for being extremely competitive and much lower conversion rates are the norm. Like 10% is pretty good in the copier business, okay? Um, now, fun fact, I'm a sales trainer and I'm gonna offer you some free training at contributionselling.com. Uh, and in that training, I'll show you how I went from uh, very ordinary closing rates in the copier business to uh, uh, about 90% in the wedding business, well over 90% uh, in the consulting business in the 90% range. So I can show you um, really how to impact that closing rate. And I'm going to give you a little taste today. But, um, but anyway, so what is a good closing rate? Let me get the question again. What is a good closing rate in sales? So it really depends on the type of sales. So, you know, there's copier, you know, there's there's capital equipment. Copier, copiers would be an example of that, right? It's a big purchase, right, of a piece of equipment. Uh, there are subscription uh, sales, like uh, on your smartphone, you probably have various applications that you pay every month for, right? That would, you know, that's the opposite of capital equipment. That's like a monthly payment for something. Um, there's equipment versus services. I'm a sales trainer. I might offer to train you in a certain thing, which is, again, very different than capital equipment. Uh, if you were a business and you were trying to do business in a traditional way, it would be clear for you, you know you needed a copier, and then what you're trying to do is actually just choose the best copier, best vendor, uh, that sort of thing, get the best deal you can for, for the thing that you know that you need. But uh, maybe in sales training, it's not so obvious that you need a sales trainer. I might need to educate you on the opportunity or the benefits of having someone on your side who's actually kind of been there before and has taken the, you know, time to train themselves and can really answer a lot of questions for you in a way that impacts your performance, right? So it might take a minute to educate you on why sales trainer is a good idea. So that would be commodity sale versus educational sale. If I'm selling copiers, you know you need a copier. I'm just simply making a case for this one right here is the best choice, okay? And if I'm a sales trainer, I might have to have a conversation with you. You might think, well, what do I need a sales trainer for? I'm closing at uh, 15%. That's 50% over the national norm. Uh, you might think you're doing great. And then I might come in and say, hey, I could show you how to go from 15% to 30% uh, 
uh, in a very short period of time with no extra stress or work, would you be interested in hearing about that? Right, and you're like, oh, well, that's, well, that's kind of interesting, right? And that'd be a like educational approach to creating some interest in what I have to offer, right? So, so uh, what's a good close rate in sales? It wildly depends on the type of sales uh, that you're in, right? So it's just kind of giving you why there's so many variables. There are a lot of variables. However, whatever, whatever type of sales you're in, or whatever environment you're in, let me give you some basics, right? And this this could potentially double your close rate, right? So if you're a uh, beginner to intermediate, I mean, uh, when I say intermediate, I'm, I'm like well over 30 years in. So when I say intermediate, I mean up to like five, seven years kind of thing. You might think that's uber experienced, but it's not. <laughs> and I mean that with respect. When I was in sales uh, seven, five years or so, I had some game, but uh, it, it's a much bigger picture today for me. So anyway, um, so here's some basics, okay? And I, and listen, this is something to tune into, like your career depends on it, because this re- literally is a uh, closing rate, doubling, tripling, uh, 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 10xing potential here, okay? So first thing is uh, you have to understand Right? There's actually 11 commandments, not 10. And the 11th commandment is that it's okay to lie to salespeople. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Everybody is lying to you. If you're a professional salesperson, everybody's lying to you, right? Because they're even good people, right? Because uh, they know that you're going to lie to them. Now, is that true? Who knows? I, I don't know you, right? But if I line up 10 salespeople, right, probably a good eight of them are willing to be creative with the truth, okay? <laughs> especially under pressure. Got to close the deal, need to pay my rent, my reputation's on the line, my bonus is on the line, my wife or husband is driving me crazy about my, you know, when, when's the last time I sold something, my boss is on my back, I'm, being, I'm feeling competitive with my peers at the office, da, 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 all these reasons why, oh, today I'm going to do whatever it takes to close this deal, and then the person on the other end gets the exquisite benefit of being hammered to death because you decided this is the one you're going to get, right? So that's a very typical approach to sales, right? People come in, many people come in with good intentions, not everyone, by the way, uh, but many come, people come in with good intentions and they, they're going to be one of the good guys and or good gals and all that. And then they get a little bit of pressure, the wind blows a little bit, and they start pulling out all the dirty tricks, you know, lying about this, bending the truth about this, not hearing that thing, forgetting this, this problem with the product or service, that sort of thing, right? So, all that being said is uh, if you're wondering why your potential customers are lying to you, just know that your profession has earned every single bit of it, okay? So just start there. Don't be cranky or judgmental about it. Just know that you're in a situation where the people who've gone before you, even if you're one of the good people, right? The people who've gone before you have made a mess that you're now here to clean up because that's just how that works, all right? Is it fair? Absolutely not. Okay, good. So. Now, how do you do that, right? So there's an opportunity here. There's an opportunity being in an industry or profession that's not known for uh, elevated behavior and thinking, let's call it, right? <laughs> People operating at their highest resonance, right? So here's the opportunity. It's so easy to stand out. What? Yeah. So if you, for example, were a consummate professional, super safe in the way that you way that you're being and the way that you speak and you're respectful and you're safe and you take on the characteristics that you would really appreciate if you were the customer like being the real deal listening attentively coming up with an actual solution to an actual problem <laughs> giving people space to think and say no if they need to say no right if you give people permission to say no they're going to want to say yes ding 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 this is important the more permission you give for no the more desire there is for yes, right? You can find that in your own experience, I promise. When when someone's working with you and they're giving you lots of space to ask questions and they're being generous and magnanimous and they're being attentive and they're making sure you understand what you need to understand and your questions are answered, you have affinity for that. You like that and you wanna do business with that person, right? So you could be that person, just be a decent human being listen for how to solve the problem, listen for how to be the biggest contribution you could possibly be to another human being, right? And then you'll actually create a desire on the other side of the table, if you will, 
uh, to do business with you, right? You've identified it yourself as one of the good guys just simply by being a real stand-up decent human being doing business in the most professional, conscious way you can possibly manifest, right? And that's what you get better at. Forget about getting good at sales, which is ironic because I'm about to talk to you about a sales training program. Forget about being good at sales and just be the real deal at what you do and be an actual problem solver in the world and go and take care of people. People notice and they'll want to do business with you. Okay, awesome, thanks. So, uh, all right, so I've got free sales training at contributionselling.com. It's it's brief, it's powerful, it's it's awesome. It's your gift at contributionselling.com. Um, other than that, if anything I said doesn't make sense or you have a question, I'd love to see it on my calendar with which you can get at from contributionselling.com. Okay, take care, bye-bye.